Hey guys, welcome back. Orbom here bringing you another team prep video. This is for the MPL and this week we are battling uh, the Anastar Umbreons, coached by Mystic Umbreon himself. Love the logo, love the name. Props to you, my man. It looks nice. And the team's cool too. But um, yeah, this is a tough week, guys, <laughs> to say the very least. We did just come off a win, an excellent win. Um, uh, once again, thanks to Palatown Smeargle. Uh, me and him work together. It's nice. I've never actually had somebody I can work I can work with in a competitive setting because most of my friends are competitive But they're not like super competitive So it's cool to have like a friend I can sit down and build team with who's not involved in another league And I don't feel like he's gonna backstab me <laughs> But anyways this sorry for the squeak chair this week. We're battling him. We're gonna go over my team really quick. So uh, ooh, this is a little backwards right here. Oh, no spoilers spoilers stop stop stop. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. Oh, I always do that. Anyways, we got Togekiss, Landorus T, um, Anubis, the Lucario, Mega Metacham, the Monster, Heatran, Lantern, uh, Bernie the Slow King, Chesnut, Tyranitar, and Frostlass. By the way, guys, still in the, in the comments below, leave your nicknames for its Pokemon. Uh, I don't want to keep, I don't want to have a stereotypical nickname. Like, I don't want to have a nickname, not stereotypical, but like, like a consistent nickname. I want to change them up every week. Just because it's fun. I love I love keeping different nicknames going. That way I can figure out what my favorite one is and then use that. Now, I did a lot of calculations. And on paper, we lose this matchup. And you're going to see why. <sighs> Landers Eye. Uh, it's allowed in this, it's allowed in this, um, it's allowed, it's allowed, it's allowed. You know, Life Orb, Landers Eye. Uh, the reason why he's threatening. Calm Mind, Earth Power. Oh, by the way, let's look at his stats first. 125, 115, 101, Sheer Force, which means if he goes for attacks that have secondary effects, they increase by 30%. Life Orb, same same deal. If he goes for an attack with a secondary effect, Life Orb, a Left Orb kicks in, but he doesn't take the recoil from it. So he can essentially increase his power, the power of his moves by 60% for absolutely free. They just they just can't. The secondary effect won't happen. <clears throat> also gets Sand Force and sheer force he might bring that because i have sandstorm but he has absolutely no reason to not bring sheer force um but anyways let's go over his moves uh calm mind you can set up on anybody because his bulk is 89 90 80 that's really bulky that's bulky for a pokemon that should that's already really really good um earthquake if he wants to run go physical explosion is a set extra sensory because guess what it gets that boosted power because of um because of sheer force um, just like Psychic, I think Psychic, I think he also learned Psychic. Um, Focus Blast gets boosted power. Grass Knot, um, Hammer Arm, any hidden power, whatever. Knock Off, Outrage, Psychic, as I thought he did. Rock Polish, if he thinks he wants to be really, really fast to sweep my whole team. Sludge Wave, which is a strong version of Sludge Bomb for the same reason. Uh, he's also a Stealth Rock Setter. Stone Edge gets boosted. Super Power, uh, he can run Swords Dance, Calm Mind, Bulk Up. Uh, I don't think it gets Nasty Plot, but it can run Swords Dance, Calm Mind, Bulk Up, and Rock Polish. So it has all sorts of freaking <laughs> boosters. Uh, U Turn for Momentum. Bulldoze for, you know, tech. It gets Gravity. Gravity Landorus I was one of my favorite Pokemon to use way back in the day whenever it was allowed in the ladder. Um, Iron Tail gets that boost. Um, Rock Tomb. <laughs> You guys saw you guys saw that I really wanted to use Rock Tomb last week. But yeah, he's really, 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 really versatile. And on paper, my Pokemon lose to this Pokemon by itself. Didn't really calc for a Pokemon like an Ubers to be allowed in this play. Mainly because I still feel like it's way too good. It's I think it's even better in a uh, league format than it is in um, competitive like ladder play just because the reason why Landers Eye was such a threat in competitive play was because it's really really versatile you never know what it's going to bring uh, it's sheer force boosted attacks are overpowered it can bring both physical and special set which once again the ties into the versatility and its speed and bulk is way above average like, sure, it's four times weak to the ice type moves, but so are Pokemon like Garchomp and the Flying Dragon types. It doesn't matter if you're four times weak to a move if you can kill everything on Switch in. It's ridiculous. But Landorus Eye is here, so we have to prep really, really hard to make sure we don't get loose to this thing. On top of that, he has really, really good Pokemon to support Landorus Eye. Uh, Vaporeon is one of them with access to uh, Heal Bell and Wish, as well as like Scald Burn, so I have to be wary of that. But, uh,. <laughs> This Pokemon's amazing. Like, you don't have to bring anything else. You could literally bring this set. 
or you could substitute protect with toxic but like that set is all you need and then you can support your Landorus eye as well as everybody else on his team he runs keldeo scarfed or specs i have to be really careful about this thing it can spam its water and fighting type moves i remember uh, focus blast keldeo is one of those things i really like using as of late choice specs focus, Bla focus blast keldeo nothing switches on that thing it dies to literally every pokemon it's ridiculous um dawn fan excellent rapid spinner very very physically bulky as you can see that ground typing is going to be annoying because that means like if i wanted to volt switch i don't think i have access to volt switch on my draft but um if i wanted to I couldn't. Yeah, I don't have any electric type move move users. Uh, Mega Lopunny, <laughs> ridiculously good Pokemon, especially in the current meta game. Base 135 speed, uh, base 136 attack with Scrappy, which means uh, my Frostlass will not escape its high jump kicks or returns, as well as the access to uh, elemental punches, uh, Fire Punch, Ice Punch, um, a Thunder Punch, Ice Beam. For whatever reason, I clicked on that. Um, it gets access to those, so I have to be really wary about his his uh, set. Also, Fake Out and Power Up Punch, also very, very scary. Also gets Quick Attack, so if I want to be scared of... Uh, there's a lot of this, this is really good burger style Pokemon. I don't think it's broken because, you know, things like Town Flame exist, Flying type moves in general exist. And even though it's really strong, it's not going... It doesn't Oko a lot of things. Uh, so, But it's still really versatile, and I have to be careful uh, with my Pokemon when I use it. Jirachi. One of my favorite Pokemon, uh, Scarfed Iron Head, is really the only thing I have to be worried about with this Pokemon. Everything else, it's relatively, I can deal with uh, Jirachi for the most part. Scarfed Jirachi is annoying though, it's not strong. Let me make that, let me make that very clear. J Jirachi is very versatile, but its attacks are most likely not going to Oko because it's just not a strong Pokemon. Um, it can bring cool sets like Calm Mind, Spadef, Jirachi's really cool, I like that. But Jirachi's a threat. Shaman, um, after doing some tests, at first I wasn't worried about Shaman, now I'm very worried about Shaman. Shaman's Seed Flare is freaking ridiculous. It's so, so, so strong. And I can't Toxic it, I can't Poison it. It's another Heal Bell Pokemon. It gets Aromatherapy. I know this thing gets Wish. I'm actually not too sure. It doesn't get Wish, but it gets Healing Wish. I didn't even know it got Healing Wish, which is another thing I was worried about with Jirachi. Yeah, this Pokemon's really good. You can switch into uh, things like Zoark. <laughs> Let's just switch into things. You can switch into water type moves, is what I was trying to say. Zoark, gotta be really w worried about this thing. I don't think he's gonna bring it because I, I have an idea of what his best set of Pokemon would be to bring against me. But Zoark is still scary. If he brings that, I'd be very, very, very wary of who is Zoark. Um, I remember bringing U turn on a couple of mons. I think I am. I don't remember what my team is, man. I built it like a couple days ago. Um, Zoroark's not too big of a threat though, it's pretty frail. Focus Sash Zoroark is going to be annoying because it will probably get a kill. Uh, but Zoroark is tricky, to say the least. The Galvantula, another huge issue to my team. You know, his team is so good. If he could bring, besides Keldeo, I don't think Keldeo is that great. Keldeo is interesting, don't get me wrong, it can be really be good. But like, all of his, if he could bring like, if he had one less Pokemon, besides Keldeo of course, I'd have way easier of a time building. But all of these Pokemon cause such a threat to my draft is that I have I, I'm forced to bring so many sets I really don't want to bring uh, specifically with Galvantula I have to bring Defog I really didn't want to bring Defog or any sort of hazard removal this week because I wanted to keep up the momentum I wanted to keep up the pressure but because of Galvantula and its ability to bring sticky webs to the match I have to be really really careful about who I bring so Galvant Galvantula is here um, we gotta be careful with that uh, just Electric and Bug is annoying, of course. They're all really, really strong attacks. It's coming off a 90, base 97 special attack stat. Life Orb Gavantra is annoying. He's probably going to be focused at so that he can set up his rocks, but whatever. And then we have Gardevoir. Gardevoir is another really scary mon. If anything, if he brings Gardevoir, it's most likely his Choice Scarfer. I feel like Gardevoir is a really, really solid Choice Scarfer with that base 125 attack. It's ability to run all sorts of like Moon Blast, uh, Hidden Power something, Psychic, and um, Psychic slash Psyshock, Shock, and Focus Blast. Awesome coverage, especially against my team. So yeah. I'm very, like, on paper, I've, I've done a lot, and a, I mean a lot of calculations. I think I have, if I play really, really well, I have, like, a solid 25 to 30% chance to win this game. So, <laughs> I have to really play, I have to play, I have to outplay him in every corner. Which means I have to get a feel of how he plays. Because, once again, I've never played this guy before, before and, like, it's hard for me to kind of get a feel of how people play just by watching their battles. I mean, I've been trying to watch his battles, and I kind of have an idea of how to play against them, but it's still kind of difficult just because I've never personally played against him myself, so oh, we're going to have to play really well here. So I worked a long time. Me and uh, me and, um, me and and Town Smeargle worked a long time in making this team together. So this team's very weird, but it could possibly get the job done. First things first, we bring All Might, 
uh, the shiny Lucario. Now, I have gone out and said that I don't like shiny Lucario, and I stand by it, but if you guys have watched Boku no Hero, I only made him shiny because, uh, Boku no Hero Academia, I mean, I only made him shiny because All Might is, has that blonde hair and, you know, whatever. This is a Choice Scarf Inner Focus Lucario. Now, I do have enough speed to outspeed his whole team after, um, after Scarf, including the Megalopony. The reason why that's important is because... The reason why I'm bringing Inner Focus is important because if he wants to fake me out with that Mega Low Punny, like say that he brings a Mega Low Punny and I feel like he's going to open up the battle with Mega Low Punny to kill some Pokemon because my team is relatively weak to Mega Low Punny, uh, I guess, it depends what he brings, but it could it could have some problems with Mega Low Punny. So what I want to do is I want him to fake me out turn one and with my Inner Focus I won't be flinched and then I can close combat him and Oak Home right off the bat. Not to mention the majority of his team takes some massive damage from close combat as you can see his only close combat switch in is landorus and landorus will be taking 30 percent so it does i mean sure it's not that much but it will add up over time so i'm bringing i'm bringing lucario bullet punch because it does 80 to 100 percent to an uninvested uh gardevoir and i don't feel like missing this week i say that and i'm bringing some low accuracy moves but still bullet punch i feel like is way better in the long run Ice Punch for the Landorus. Once again, I will outspeed it if he doesn't bring Scarfs. And if he does knock me off, I have Extreme Speed just to... And, like, uh, he doesn't have priority in his team, from what I can see, besides Zoark. But I am going to bring Extreme Speed specifically for the Zoark, because it'll outprioritize a Sucker Punch. Um, and it does a pretty solid chunk to it, too. Uh, I can actually check really quick, right? I'll... All right, we're back. I'm going to go ahead and uh, calc that out. Lucario... So you use Swords Dance, Adamant, no Life Orb. Extreme Speed to Zoro Arc, UU Choice Specs. Uninvested does this much, and that's not even at level 50. Level 50, uh, level 50 damage is, I believe, is a little bit more. So yeah, um, it's a little bit more. It's like 2% more. But yeah, it does over 50% uh, without a boosted item. So yeah, and uh, if he runs minus Special Defense, uh, that'd be cool. If he, minus run, if he runs minus defense, though, that'd be even better. So, yeah. So, that's why I'm bringing this. There's no extreme speed on Choice Scarf Mon, but it's like backup. If I do need something to be knocked off, I'd rather bit Lucario after the Landorus has died. And after the, um, the uh, what's it called, has died. The uh, low punny. Up next is no jokes here. He didn't get to see any play last week. Um, so, hopefully this week uh, we can do something with it. Fake Out again. Fake Out does so much damage to his team. It's absolutely ridiculous. Mega Metacham is no fucking joke honestly i wish i could bring adamant but i'm kind of forced to bring jolly so i could speed tie with the with the uh unscarfed gardevoir as well as who else oh yeah and the shaman the shaman is a huge issue so if he brings like offensive shaman i want to at least speed tie with it uh so i can knock it out with poison jab same with the gardevoir this is the only reason why i'm bringing poison jab is for those two pokemon high jump kick does do neutral damage or super effective damage on everybody else uh, which is really, really important, uh, except for Landris, of course, and the Galvantula, but they're not going to appreciate it. I'm actually kind of interested to see how much that does. Landorus. Uh, sure, all our attacker, uninvested. Versus Mega Metacham. Uh, attacker. The Kai Jump Kick does 60 to 71 without even being level 50. Yeah, 62 to 73 at level 50. Look at that. That's wild. <laughs> Fake out does 25 to 30 percent. That's almost as much extreme speed. Um, and then poison jab and Zen headbutt. Zen headbutts for the Keldeo. Um, even I mean it doesn't really matter. Zen headbutt is just there, so I have. Uh, what do I bring? Zen headbutt. Uh, what do I? What do I need Zen headbutt for? Zen headbutt has just. I guess it's a neutral option. It's a safer option to go against Pokemon. I'll look at. I'll look at my move set later to see what I can change up Zen headbutt for. Um, but it is a strong option and it won't make me die if I if he does run protect, I suppose. Uh, he's not bringing screens this week. He doesn't really have a way to bring screens. I could bring Ice Punch, but once again, I'm not going to be outspeeding the Landorus no matter what I do. So there's not really a point. He's going to Oko me. <laughs> Landorus is really, really strong. He Oko's Mega Metacham. It's ridiculous. Up next is Bernie. Uh, I have to bring Bernie this ring and I have to bring a Calm Mind set. Now, originally, this wasn't going to be a Calm Mind set. It was going to be Toxic over Calm Mind. But that Vaporeon forces me to not bring Toxic because Heal Bell is just so easy for me to just pop. Same with that Shaman. Uh, I'm bringing Calm Mind because this is my one way to win the game, to be completely honest. Like, if I can, 
If I can come in on a weakened Pokemon, if I can come in on a Pokemon that can't Oko me, uh, I can go in. One Calm Mind is really all I need, and I'm doing major, major damage to his whole team, as well as eating up so many hits. I have to hope there's no crits. I have to hope he doesn't Toxic me or any of that nonsense, or Paralyze me or anything like that. And Scald and Psychic just wrecks his team. Scald. Psychic. The reason why, I can set up in Vaporeon's face if he doesn't Toxic me super easily. Psychic. Scald. Scald. Or Psychic, I mean. Scald. Um... <laughs> Psychic, Scald, Scald, Psychic, Scald. Like, uh, plus one boost, I'll eat up hits from Galvantula, I'll eat up hits from Zoroark. Plus two is what I want to do if, I, if he still has Galvantula in the field. Zoroark's an issue if it's physical, if it's special, it's not too bad, but if it's choice spec special, it's a problem. I have to make sure I'm at plus two. Uh, things like that. But yeah, uh, this is the only two attacks I need. Hopefully I can get some Scald Burns or something like that. Uh, slack off, heal up my health um, just so that I can keep surviving keep trucking this is hopefully going to be the one that wins me the game um that's a tough week guys uh, up next is togekiss another pokemon i really didn't want to bring i wanted togekiss to be togekiss to be a nasty plot attacker this week uh, i'm talking like high speed um nasty plot roost thunder wave air slash because his switch into air slash is uh togekiss but i do have enough bulk to, to survive a uh, what's it called Survive an Iron Head, and if I don't get flinched, then I can um, I can land that Thunder Wave, and everything will be handy dandy. Uh, chances of that are pretty low, but I can't even bring that set anyways because I have to bring Defog because I'm bringing a Scarf Pokemon and All Might, and then I need my Speed and my Metacham. So I have to make sure that I don't get slowed down. It's really all there is to it. I want to make sure that that stupid Sticky Web is off the field. Uh, Heal Bell is there because I can't let this Pokemon get toxic. I can't get these Pokemon to be paralyzed. I have to make sure I'm healthy. Uh, Roost to keep myself healthy, myself, and then Air Slash. I'm running Max Bidef, a little bit, a little bit in defense. Um, actually, weird, oh yeah, this makes it, this makes it odd number. Uh, this is just so I can survive one Sludge Wave from Max Special Attack. Um, Lando, and I can hit it with Air Slash. Air Slash does a decent amount. Togekiss is nothing to sneeze at. It's a lot of Special Attack for not being invested in whatsoever. I just hope I don't miss. And uh, I do outspeed the Vaporeon, so if I, you know, flinch it 30 times, I can knock it out. It's also a hard, hard, hard wall that's Keldeo. Keldeo can't do anything to me. With that max special attack, even if he runs Icy Wind, it's not going to do shit to me. Um, I can survive a hit or two from Low Punny and then hit him with the Air Slash. Drachi's an issue. My, I do, my, am I bringing, uh, I'm bringing Heatran. So yeah, as long as I have Heatran, Jirachi won't be too bad. Mainly because an HP ground from Jirachi, from like Choice Specs Jirachi, only does, I think, a max of 70%, and then I'll just kill from the Lava Plume. Um, I can do some massive damage to the Shaman. Also, Zoark, I hardwall, unless he's bringing, uh, Nasty Plot Sludge Bomb. Eventually, I'll tank a hit, at least one hit, and I can go for the Defog. And then, Gardevoir, I can deal with. So, Togekiss will be tanking a hit. It'll be a pretty okay pivot up next is uh glacia the frost last destiny bomb ice beam shadow ball and spikes i i'm i'll trade a bomb <laughs> i'm okay this week with trading a pokemon for frost last so i'm bringing destiny bomb destiny bond focus sash i'll trade one of my pokemon for frost last uh also have ice beam for the landorus shadow ball for a lot of his other pokemon specifically jirachi and the gardevoir i do outspeed them both if they're not scarfed as he mostly hits the Shaman. And then I can set up Spikes. Spikes do affect this team. Shaman, Zoar, Gavantula, uh, Gardevoir. Everything except for Landorus gets affected by Spikes, which is nice. I hate that Landorus is a flying type, but whatever. Um, if it was pure ground, he'd probably be way better. Because he doesn't he doesn't have any flying stab that even affects him. But, he, yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's debatable. Um... And I can Ice Beam the Landorus. So this Pokemon's a threat to his team. It's a pretty decent threat to his team. Low Pony outspeeds me, so I have to be careful about that. But Ice Team nukes things, which is really, 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 really nice. And Shadow Bomb nukes... And Shadow Ball nukes... Shadow Bomb, man. Shadow Ball nukes things also. It's not invested. It's, I mean, it is invested, but it's not like max special attack or anything. I am running only enough speed to outspeed his fastest Pokemon. Being Landorus, I believe, is his fastest Pokemon. Uh, I mean, that besides... Um, What's it called? Besides Mega Low Pony, but I'm never outspeeding that, so it doesn't even matter. And um, it's not like I have to pre predict for a Scarfer. 153 is his max speed. Uh, it's faster than Jirachi. So 153 is his max speed. And my speed that I'm running is 177. Why am I running 177? Oh, I, I wasn't doing a boosting nature. That's my bad. Plus. Sure. That's, a, that's the thing I'm predicting him to bring. That's the, that's the nature, I believe. 
77 versus 168. Still, like, why am I running that much speed? Does he have anything that's like... Oh, Keldeo is faster. That's right. I'm dumb. For some reason, I was thinking 109, like Durant, because, like, 5th Gen had the weirdest freaking um, sets. The weirdest base stats. Like, they were being all edgy and shit. It didn't make any sense to me. Uh, let's see, 176. Yeah, so I do outspeed this. Uh, there's nothing else that's faster in his team from what I remember. 105 is slower. All right, cool. And then Galvantula has speed ties. So, cool. All right. So, yeah. 177, enough speed to outspeed it. That's why another reason why I don't want any um, any sticky webs on the field. Sticky webs are such a horrible thing paired with the landers. And then last Pokemon is Pompeii. Um, what is this? What, what happened here? This was not my spread. What? This wasn't my spread. Oh shit, now I don't know what my spread was. Quick pause, guys. Well, I don't remember my spread. Because I don't have it written down in my other computer. I might have it written down in my other computer, actually. Let me double check. But, I know it was especially defensive. But I know I ran some awkward, like, defense EVs to survive specific hits. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully I have it on my computer right here and my teams didn't get deleted. Because my computer, both of my computers as of late have been kept cleaning themselves out without me telling them to. And because of that I have lost a lot of teams. Like for instance, that battle against Poi I had, that was yesterday for me, um, but like it won't go up till, um, it won't go up until the following day or maybe the same day of this. I think it's the same day as this. But um, I... <laughs> I was about to battle them, but then my teams just got deleted as I was going through my teams. It was ridiculous. Let me check this real quick, though. Da, da, da. Heatran. Are you special? Are you unique? No. No, it got messed up on this computer. Crazy. All right, cool. Well, it was um, 248, I believe what it was. What was it, 248? Yeah. Wait a I could bring 244, right? All right, cool. Yeah, so I want to bring 244, level 50, uh, max spadef. With, I guess, oh, we'll just do this, whatever. I want to see how much Lava Plume does to uh, Jirachi, though. Heatran, OU, especially defensive. Sure, that shouldn't be, that shouldn't affect anything. Level 50 versus Jirachi, Jirachi. Uh, level 50 also. Yeah, level boom to 66 to 78. I'm okay with that damage. Um, Stealth Rocker, just for Landorus. If he keeps switching in, taking taking all this priority damage, he'll eventually go down. Um, so, priority damage from Fake Out Extreme Speed, plus Stealth Rocks, uh, if he keeps switching around, will be really beneficial for me. Lava Plume, Toxic, and Protect. I told you earlier I didn't want to bring Toxic because of Vaporeon, but it also forces Vaporeon to go for Toxic. Unlike with Bernie, I don't want him going, I don't want him going, I want to, I had to make room for Calmine in this set, because Calmine wins me the game. And like, it didn't work against Vaporeon 1v1, because um, it forces him, like he can just go for Heal Bell 8 times and like, he'll run out eventually, but I, I lose that, I lose that battle 1v1 with the Scald Burn. And he has Water Absorb, so I can't Scald Burn it. But with this Pokemon, I can Toxic other things, forcing Vaporeon to come out. And then as I'm predicting Vaporeon to come out, I can make my plays. Uh, Stealth Rocks, once again, Stealth Rocks do affect his team. Uh, Gavantula takes 25%. Um, that's about it, really. But Gavantula is kind of big. I want to make sure that thing dies and loses his Focus Sash. If he brings it, I should predict him to lead with it. But g the reason why I'm bringing Air Balloon on Heatran is actually kind of cool. I did some test games whenever um, I was playing against him. And uh, it was, Landorus was here, and Landorus was running Earth Power and Sludge Wave, so what I would do is I'd go out to Togekiss, all right? I double into uh, into Lucario, all right? And as he goes for Earth Power, I double back into Heatran, and that forces him to break my balloon, so he can't Oko me with anything, unless he's bringing, like, Choice Banded Hammer Arm, which, or Super Power, which I don't think he's going to. So, uh, he can't, and even that I don't think will Oko me, just because Heatran's really bulky. Um, but as I'm doing that, I can get up my free rocks, I can Toxic, or I can Lava Plume. I could also predict to scout what attack he's going to go for. And then Toxic protects for stall. I do I don't have leftovers anymore, so maybe I shouldn't no no, I need to run protect because of high jump kick from uh from the uh what's it called? From the mega low punny. 
So yeah, the team is a tad bit convoluted, and this is most likely not going to be my final set. I have to try to remember or recalc the set that I had in this thing, because what I do is I calc for specific moves and hitting me, and uh, try to see what I can run to survive those attacks and survive other attacks, and if I can't survive those attacks, make other attacks to a KO, and then try to invest the rest into offense if I need to, or the rest in the bulk, such as in this set. Um, but yeah, the team's a bit convoluted. But that is the team nonetheless. So make some suggestions below on like what you think would be like a better team. Because I could definitely learn from you guys. Because you know, I know that a lot of you guys learn from me. But I mean, this is a two-sided thing. You know, guys, we're, we're all friends. You're all friends here. You guys can make some suggestions below. And uh, yeah, drop a like, subscribe, share. Let me know if you guys are hyped for this battle. I'm really, really nervous for it. I do battle him as of right now. I'm recording this on Thursday. I battle him tomorrow on Friday. And the video goes up the Sunday. That's Sunday. So yeah little little uh fourth wall kind of thing there but yeah i'll see you guys next time thank you guys so much for watching drop a like subscribe share all the good jazz and i'll see you guys next time peace